Lord in the sanctuary. The sanctuary may very well be your living room. It may very well be your bedroom. But come on, put your hands together and let's give God some praise. How many of you know that he's worthy to be praised? From the rising of the sun until the setting of the same, our God is worthy to be praised. So we're going to praise him for his marvelous acts. Praise him with the sound of your voice. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him for his greatness. Praise him for the timbrel and dance. Praise him for the trumpets. Praise him for the loud sounding cymbals. Praise him for the string instruments and the organs. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Truly, the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Come on, clap your hands with us this morning, O ye people. Shout to God with the voice of triumph. Everything that has breath, let us all praise the Lord. For we give him all honor, we give him all glory, and we give him all praise. Good morning and welcome to Boynton Chapel United Methodist Church in Houston, Texas. I am Pastor Linda Davis, and we are so excited to have have you worship with us on today. So we know that God has a place and the time for each and every one of us, that we're in the right place at the right time. So we come to give God the glory. Let us go to God in prayer and let us pray as Jesus taught the disciples. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forget us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
on and put your hands together and praise God, for God is worthy to be praised. Let us prepare our hearts to worship God in our giving today. As always, we are thankful for your continued commitment to the mission and ministry of Boynton Chapel. We invite you to make a contribution through Zale at Boynton Chapel, UMC at gmail.com, or through Givelify at Boynton Chapel United Methodist Church. You may even mail your tithes and offering into us at 2812 Milby Street, Houston, Texas, 77004. And we pray that God will continue to bless your homes abundantly, that there should never, ever be a lack.
the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him all his angels. Praise him all the heavenly hosts. Praise him sun and the moon. Praise him all the shining stars. Praise him you highest heavens and you waters above the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord for he at commanded at his command we were all created. Amen and amen. Good morning and let me welcome you to our first Sunday worship service after Christmas here at Boynton Chapel United Methodist Church in Houston, Texas. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Father in heaven, again we just give thanks to you for all that you do for us. But for more than anything, God, we thank you for the great love that you showed toward us through the giving of your Son, Jesus the Christ. God, we realize we could never, ever thank you enough, but we do say thank you. God, we love you, we praise you, and now, God, I ask that you would just search my heart. If there be anything about me that you're not pleased with, oh, God, I ask that you would remove it, cast it away, that it will never return again. And, Father, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you because you are my strength and my redeemer. Amen and amen. If you would turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Galatians, Galatians 4, verses 4 through 7. Again, that's Galatians 4, 4 through 7. And it reads, But when the fullness of time had came, God sent his Son, born of a woman under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And, bec and because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer slaves, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. These are the words of God for the people of God, and thanks be to God. You know, we're just a couple of days now from celebrating the Christmas holiday. And for some of you, this was a great celebration, being with family and some close friends. But for some, it wasn't exactly the celebration that you had grown accustomed to. Some of you, it was only a small gathering. Some, it was being quarantined away from family because of the COVID-19. And yet for some, it was no celebration at all. It was an empty chair looking across the table what used to be loved ones who celebrated the Christmas time with you. And then there were some of you who celebrated, but it was nothing like before because of the sickness that's in the family. And then for some, due to the economic, uh, the, the, due to the cause of our economic today and the finances were not like they were once before, celebrating was not an easy thing to do. But regardless of what your Christmas celebration was like, the psalmist tells us that we must praise the Lord. Many of us didn't as much as give a gift or exchange a gift because they were feeling down because they didn't have what they once had before. But I still say to you, praise the Lord. Why? Because he commanded everything that he has created to praise him. And God has always loved us and he's always showed us his perfection through his great love. So I want to use for you this morning the topic, a cause for celebration. A cause for celebration. The Bible helps us to understand that things might, all, might not always go the way we had planned them. Things will never be the same. In fact, it tells us that everything must change including the way we celebrate at times. And for some of us, that's hard to accept. But the one thing for sure that we can accept and know without a doubt, that is that God loves us. He always has and he always will. In fact, in Ephesians 1 and 4, it tells us that, for he chose us in him long before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. 
He, in love, he predestined us uh, for adoption to be sonship through his son Jesus in accordance with his pleasure and his will to do the pleasures of his glorious grace, which ha he has freely given us in the one he loved. And that is through Jesus Christ. See, it's not always about our timing. It's not always about what we are going through, but it is always about what God has planned for both you and I. You see, God, the Bible tells us in Romans 5, 6, and 8 that you see just at the right time when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, but through Christ, a good person might die so that we might have life. But God demonstrated his own love for us in this. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Not many feel like celebrating when so many things around us are, are causing us difficult times. But I assure you that there is a cause to celebrate. We feel weak and sometimes we feel helpless, but you need to understand that this is nothing new to mankind. Man has always been weak and man has always tried to find a way to make things better for himself. But I tell you that there's nothing you nor I can do that could ever take us out of this sinful world. God, God alone had to rescue us. Not only did God have to rescue us, but the Bible helps us to understand that God sent his son at the right time in history so that we could have an eternal life with him. He came exactly at the right time according to God's own schedule. While we were yet sinners, God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. Why? Not because of we were so good. Not because we've done enough. Not even because we have looked after the hungry. Not because we fed, we fed, we've taken care of the needy. Not even because we visit the sick. Nor did we visit those in jail. But the Bible helps us to understand that we could never do enough. It is only because he loves us. Paul tells us in Galatians 4 that when the time had fully come, God sent his son so that we might live. Not just live, but that we might live and have life, life eternally. The Bible tells us that God sent his son, born of a woman, under the law. And he says at the fullness of time, God sent his son into the world that we might have a chance. And what I, what I want you to understand about this, Paul makes it very clear. He gives us the analogy that, that we were all slaves at one time. We were slaves to the sins of this world. And he tells the, the, the people in Gal at the Galatian church that, that they need to understand just as a, a slave works under his master, the master sometimes appoints his son to, to work uh, subjected to the slave. In other words, the slave had to teach the son and show the son all the things that the master wanted him to learn. For some of us today, it's something like a, a having a, a trustee over you or having an annuity or something, something that says that when you have fulfilled all the things that the owner says you have to fulfill, then he says, now it's time for you to receive your inheritance. Paul said, tells the Galatians, that, that the master set an appointed time for the son to work as under the slave, for the slave to show him the things of this world. When he says that God, Jesus came under the law, born of a woman, this was during a time when there was many trials. There were, there were many things going on in the world that, that, that was not lining up with God's will. But it said Jesus came to the same world under the same law that he came to save you and I from. The law, because why the law at this time was there to show us how perfect God was, but how imperfect we were. But man could never live up to the perfection of God, so he sent his one and only son. His only son came into the world to share the frustration and the agony, and he was subject to that same law. The world had been prepared, God had been preparing the world just for the coming of his son. You see, you may not understand it, but it was just at the exact time, at the exact date, God sent his son. 
The Bible helps us to understand that Christ was born to a particular person at a particular time in a particular way under a particular system just the way God had predestined it. See, sometimes we think that things that we're going through is something new or something strange, but God makes it very clear to us that he knew exactly what we were going to be going through. Even as we go through this pandemic now, God predestined these things. And so the question is, since God predestined destined these things for us what is it that we can get out of it one is that God loves us two is that God not only loves us but God has planned a way for us to get out of this and that way he makes it very clear in the scriptures he tells us that he sent us a high priest who has suffered in every way that mankind can suffer he said that he has been through all of the agony all of the frustration but yet he did he, he did them all in other words, he fulfilled the law. We no longer are under the law. What it makes it clear to us that Paul was saying as he was writing to the church that this was during a time when the world appeared to be spiritually starved. That men, mankind had began to think more about themselves than others. That they were no longer trying to meet the needs of others in the world, but they were satisfying themselves. Some were even worshiping other gods. And many of them had turned from God's law and started leading others to turn right along with them. In other words, they were telling them all the things that, that they thought they must do in order to be acceptable to God. They were, they were beginning to, to celebrate in all of these different types of, of worship activities. They were beginning to celebrate in all of the different rituals and the ceremonies and observing special days just so that they could become good enough for God. But as I said before, there's absolutely nothing neither you nor I can do to make us acceptable to God. It is only by the love of God and the grace of God that God sent his one and only son so that we might have eternal life with him. The Bible says that God sent his son, born of a woman, under the law. He came and he was able to fulfill the law. He said the law was, 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 was no man was able to keep the law, but because of his son Jesus, he was perfect in every way. He kept the law. He kept the law so that you and I might be able to have an eternal life with both he and the Father. You see, the scripture tells us in Luke 1, Luke 1 and 31, that you will, he told Mary, he said, you will conceive and give birth to a son and you will call him Jesus. You need to understand that this virgin death was not what they call fake news. It was for real. God predestined it. God planned it. That he would have a son and he would come through a woman who had not yet been touched by anyone. Only through the power of his Holy Spirit that God gave his, gave his only son. But what he did, what he said was, rather than coming as a mighty God, he came to us and made himself nothing. And he came in the form of a, in the nature of a servant being made in human likeness. He made a way for us to become heirs. He made a way for us to become, for our sin debt to be paid through his son. He made a way that we might receive the fullness that a son will expect from the father when the fullness of time came through his son, Jesus. God set the time and he made that way. And he said, because we are sons, his sons, that he sent also his spirit into, of his son into our hearts. Now, let me help you with that a little bit. What he's saying is, is that when he sent his son to the world, all he asked us to do, and John 3, 16 helps us with this a lot. It says that believe in God. It said those who believe in God shall not perish. In other words, he said we must believe in God. He said, and when we believe in God, God then looks at us as being his sons. What, it's, what he's telling us is that when we accept his son, Jesus Christ, it says that God's the spirit of Christ comes in us. And when the spirit of Christ comes in us, this is the actual spirit of God. And now that perfectness, that perfection that is in Christ now rests in us. Not saying that we are perfect, but Christ's perfection is in us. And because his perfection is in us, when God looks at us, we no longer have to wait until a trustee or until a, a, a slave or someone tell the master we're ready. Our readiness shows that when we accept his son, because 
because we are now perfect because his son lives in us. He says that now we're ready to be called his son. It says that now his spirit, the spirit of Jesus Christ rests in us. And because the spirit of Jesus Christ rests in us, he says now we're able to call him Abba Father. Now I don't know what that means to you to be able to call Abba Father, but I, I think about when I had my first young child and when that child was a baby to, and I was just waiting every day for that, that word to come out, those words that says something like Dada. That, that, that makes me feel so good. God has fixed it so that when we call on him, our father is saying, daddy, daddy, whatever your needs are, daddy, daddy, whatever you might feel or have a desire for, it's daddy, daddy. See, I don't know about you. You may not have felt too festive over the Christmas holidays, but I can assure you that there is a cause to celebrate. But it may not have been the day that Jesus was actually born, but we do know that he was born of a woman. And because he was born of a woman, that gives us cause to celebrate. And as we celebrate, I assure you that, that, that this same Jesus, that, that God God gave so that we might have eternal life is the same Jesus that came into the world as a little baby came into the world so that we might be saved. This is the same Jesus that paid our sin debt for, for all of the sins in the world. This is the same Jesus not only who paid our sin debt, but is the same Jesus who came into the world so that we might live and have life abundantly. Life abundantly. I don't know what you call abundantly, but I would just love to have the fruit of the Spirit in me. I think that's about as abundant as it could be because it's the love of God. It's the peace of of God. It's the joy of God. It's the humility of God. It's the gentleness of God. It's the kindness of God. All of these things God has given us and we celebrate about it on this day that we call Jesus. Jesus they call Christmas. Excuse me. You see, I don't know about you, but, but all God asked us to do is to believe in his son Jesus. All he asked us to do is accept his son Jesus as his one and only son. Believe in him so that we might have eternal life. When God placed his spirit into us, he said we no longer are, are we no longer our slaves. But now we've been adopted into his family. And because we have been adopted into his family, he says now we are full heirs. Full heirs of God. God is our father. So and if God is our father, I told you in the beginning, he said, praise the Lord, because God created everything. And if God created everything, no matter what's going on in this world, God is still able to fix it. God is still in control. I don't know about you this morning, but if you have not accepted Jesus Christ, if you do not believe that he is the one and only son of God, I, I, I offer him to you today because we're living in what we call perilous times. Many didn't celebrate. Some may not make it to the next Christmas celebration. But I give you a cause to celebrate every day. Why? Because this is the appointed time. The fullness of time. God has made Jesus Christ available to each and every one of us. There's no longer an excuse for not accepting Christ. I offer Christ to you this morning. If you've not accepted Christ as your one and only Savior, we'll open up the doors of the church to you right now this morning. I'll ask you, if, if you've not accepted Christ, we ask that you would please just say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I know that I've not done all that I could have nor all that I should have, but God, I thank you that you died upon the cross for me. You came into this world so that I might be saved. And because I now believe in you, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And I thank you now that you've made me full heirs with you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. That's all you have to do. Brothers and sisters, if you don't have a church home, we ask that you please consider Boynton Chapel here in Houston. But if not Boynton Chapel, then we, we, I ask you to go to any church that's open in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I know they will be more than happy to accept you. Again, God, we thank you. God bless you. And may God continue to keep you. Amen.
I pray that you have been blessed by the word and worship on today. If you really want to rededicate your life to the Lord or better than that, if you want to know the amazing love of God for the first time, or if you would like to become a member of the church, you may email us at info at Boynton Chapel Houston.com. And if you are in need of prayer, please call the church at 713-748-6066. Again, that number is 713-748-6066. Check us out on Facebook at Boynton Chapel UMC Houston or on YouTube at Boynton Chapel United Methodist Church Houston. You may even go to our website, which is www.boyntonchapelhouston.com. And also to get more information, we want to encourage you to text us at Boynton at 31996. Again, text Boynton at 31996. We thank you for being here with us. We pray that you have a blessed and wonderful week. And we want to give God the glory for all that he's doing and all that he's done. So let us go to our benediction. Go into the world sharing yourselves and proclaiming God's loving kindness, justice, and peace in words and deeds that bring life and hope. Be blessed and have a great week. We'll see you next time. Pastor Linda Davis.